off of the banks onto the flat surface. So the drivers really have to discipline themselves or there can be trouble coming into the pits. From Bill Elliott all the way back to Dick Skillen, who qualified at 194.8 miles per hour to earn 40th spot. They're formed up in turns one and two and set to go. The man who'll drop the green flag today is half of the best-selling musical partnership in the history of popular records, John Oates, where he and his musical partner, Daryl Hall, played sold-out concerts the last three nights at Nashville, Birmingham, and Chattanooga and structured the tour so that Oates, who competes uh, occasionally on the Camel GT road racing circuit, could be here to drop the green flag for the fastest field in stock car history. We'll talk to him later on in today's broadcast. field is forming up in the middle of the back straight away. They'll cut them loose next time by. I asked Cale Yarborough here earlier in the week if he felt like he could hang on to the draft and run up front. Cale says he feels like that he can draft. He had the quote of the week, I think, with all the news guys here. And uh, earlier in the week, they asked him about not being able to draft a Ford Thunderbird, and Cale said that's kind of bull. He said that's not really the case. He said you just have trouble catching one to draft it, and that may be the case here this afternoon. But a lot of drivers don't seem to think so. They think they'll be able to run right up there with the Ford Thunderbirds all day. It's certainly going to be interesting to find out. The Winston 500 will turn out undoubtedly to be the fastest race in the history of stock car racing, as we've said a couple of times here this afternoon. 18 drivers qualifying at over 200 miles an hour, and right at this particular moment, as they work the banking up in the north end of the speedway, Sullivan is there. Mike Joy, you you know they have to have a kind of a case of nerves, and Dave Sutherland will cover the action in that area. Let's go to him now. Well, the field's now forming up behind that gleaming white Pontiac Trans Am pace car as they start to tighten up and head into the trioval area, just coming down past pit road now. And the next time by, we'll be seeing them drive off the green flag, the pace car heads on to pit road, we're ready to go! Crowd lets out a mighty cheer as they're ready to turn them loose here for the running of the Winston 500. They're in the dog leg, and that, as many drivers say, is the toughest turn on this particular racetrack, is getting through that dog leg. And indeed, next time they come through here, they'll be whistling it better than 205 miles an hour. They are down to the line, green flag is displayed to the field, and the Winston 500 is underway. Dropping all the way down to the inside, going three wide for a moment. Darrell Walker trying to move up some spots as they hit turn one. But they'll stay basically two by two as they work their way into turns one and two for the first time of 188 laps. Still two by two. But now it's three wide. Levante wants the lead. He'll pull to the inside of Bill Elliott and Gail Yarborough. It's still three wide. And now Darrell Waltrip has an idea to join that battle. They head down the back stretch to turn three. Go, Dave. They are going at it, hammer and tong into the banking, and it's Yarborough who'll take the lead into turn three, turn four. Yarborough coming down low. He's being trailed by Kyle Petty as the field begins to break off the turn and head down into the trioval area. Your leader, Cale Yarborough. Kyle Petty goes second, then it's the Folgers okay. for Joe Rutman. It is an all forward front twosome. It is Kale, Kyle Petty, Joe Rutman is third, Labonte is fourth, Walter is fifth, sixth is Bill Parsons, seventh is Bobby Hillen. All the way back to eighth spot is Bill Elliott. Turn one. But Elliott is on the move now. He's into seventh spot, and he works to the inside of Bobby Hillen, trying to pick off sixth. That's the only two-way battle among the front cars until Labonte pulls out. The lead car is Yarborough. Kyle Petty is second. Labonte now on the move. He's to the inside and third. Labonte working to the inside. Yarborough still your leader with Kyle Petty glued to his rear bumper. Coming down low. Who is this? It's Darrell Waltrip moving into the third spot just beyond the Folgers car of Joe Rutman. Here they come off the turn again, and it's Yarborough, your leader. Kyle Petty trailing. Okay. Cale Yarborough said he could lead this race, and indeed he has. He's jumped out front as he pulls Kyle Petty down to the line. Back in the field is where the jostling is going on from third on back. Third is Walker, fourth is Rutland. Battle for fifth spot between Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott as they hit turn one. Elliott has the inside groove holding down fifth. Labonte staying right with him to the outside. It's too and Kyle Petty try to link up and chase down the leader, and they're beginning to gain on him. They've cut it down now to about three or four car lengths, and there may be a battle for the lead before they leave turn two. At the same time, Jeff Bodine trying to work further back. He looked to the inside of Bobby Hillen in what would have been a battle for 10th, but Jeffrey decides to go single file. It's just two car lengths now. Bill Elliott's lead over a hard closing day of Earnhardt, but Earnhardt has company because Kale Yarborough and Kyle Petty are right there. The draft beginning to stretch itself out now with four car starting to break away, led by Elliott. Three car lengths back to Earnhardt, two back to Petty, and two more back to Yarville, then about five back to the Darrell Waltrip car as they swing off turn four. Elliott's course Thunderbird is not running off from anybody right now as Earnhardt and Kyle Petty have erased that deficit. It's now just about five car lengths. Kale swings high in the trioval. He's fourth, Waltrip fifth, Rutman is sixth, Bonnet is seventh, Phil Parsons is eighth, Richard Petty is ninth, and Bobby Hill is tenth. Uh, 
back at the Alabama International Motor Speedway, Harry Gant is just turning through the pit wall and his gold bandit. A lot of smoke out of that car. Ned Jarrett will have the story on that. Let's check in with Ned right now. Well, Barney, we're on our way down. Rusty Wallace has also slowed in the Al Yogard Pontiac. Checking on him, Jerry Punch will get with Harry Gant in a moment. So two cars already. The attrition rate last time we were here was very high at the Alabama International Motor Speedway. He holds 12th spot, David Pearson 13th. Up to 14th is Buddy Baker with 15th, Ricky Rudd. 16th position still held by Bobby Allison with 17th, Ron Bouchard. Single file 18th is Sterling Marlin. 19th will be Lake Speed with Benny Parsons 20th there in turn three. In turn three again, and Earnhardt has closed in on the bumper of Elliott. Elliott drops down a groove to keep him back there. Earnhardt looks to the inside, breathes the car a little bit, and stays right behind Bill Elliott. Petty about two car lengths back. Yarbrough another four back behind Petty as they come into the short shoot. Things are going to get hot at the Alabama International Motor Speedway as Bill Elliott looks in that rearview mirror. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. He's cut it down to two car lengths. Right behind him is Kyle Petty. A couple more back there is Cale Yarbrough as the front four are locked tight in turn one. And Earnhardt is there. He looks to the inside, but Bill Elliott comes down to block that opening and an effective move. So Earnhardt will back still holding in the second spot. Kyle Petty in third. Cale Yarborough in fourth. Hold single file. There's race traffic now being a factor. Just three car lanes ahead of the leaders. Race traffic. The quartet of lead cars moving up on four other lap cars as they come up to the banking in turn three. Elliott leads the way. Earnhardt won't attempt to pass now as they come by two of the... Back into the trioval at 200 miles an hour. Elliott now has a four-car breakaway at the front of the field. It's Elliott, Earnhardt, Kyle Petty, and Yarborough. Waltrip leads the second draft. Joe Rutman, Neil Bonnet, Phil Parsons, and the rest of the pack totaling some 20 cars. Lead cars going past Connie Saylor and J.D. McDuffie, so for the moment, nobody makes a passing move. Off turn two, Earnhardt has consistently come off the corner, looking to make a pass to the inside of Bill Elliott, but once they get to the midpoint of the back straightaway, it's all single file. Another five back to Waldrop. And Tim Richmond is way back toward the tail end of the field. He and Mike Alexander drafting along together, just trying to catch up to about 27th position. Elliott takes him back to turn one, and Earnhardt goes to work on him again. Those front four still nose to tail, about a half a car length separate them. Here's Earnhardt to the bottom of the racetrack. And this time he has an opening. Bill Elliott will slip up just a half groove. Earnhardt winds up the Wrangler Monte Carlo. It's a drag race off turn two. Earnhardt has the inside groove. Elliott, though, with that horsepower, catches him, and now Kyle Petty pulls to the inside. It's three-way in turn three. The Talladega draft does the job as Kyle Petty drafts past Earnhardt, but there in front again is Bill Elliott. Elliott got it back, and Petty moves into second. Earnhardt to third. Yarbrough sitting back there in fourth, and then back to the next five or six cars led by Darrell Waltrip. It's a four-car draft, leaving a seven-car draft, and then an eight-car pack as they come to the start-finish line to complete 16 laps. Earnhardt has a look on the low side of Kyle Petty, thinks better of it, tucks back in line. It's Elliott. Petty and Earnhardt. The draft at Talladega is a big rubber band. You can stretch it out, but they all come back together again. And now there are 16 cars closed up in one long draft up to turn four. Elliott is still the leader. Kyle Petty hangs on to second. And third is Dale Earnhardt. Fourth is Cale Yarborough. Fifth is Waltrip. Sixth is Rutman. And seventh, Bodine. From the Alabama International Motor Speedway, this is MRN, the Motor Racing Network. Back in that fourth spot is still Cale Yarborough as they work in the back chute. Let's go to the garage and Ned Jarrett. We're standing on pit road with Richard Childers, of course, who owns the car that Dale Earnhardt is driving. They were running laps, Barney, of around 206 when they were catching Bill Elliott. Now they settled to about 203. Richard, did you think that you could stay up with Bill this easy to turn in the race? Well, Dale just said he wanted to get up there close to him. He knew if we get up there close to him, we'd get a shot. But I, we don't know if he's just holding back now or what. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Jerry Punch is standing by in the garage area. Well, Canadian Trevor Boyd is a third car to retire. He's parked the McKeg Racing Chevrolet. Trevor, what, what's the problem? Seems like we lost an engine. Seems we cracked a piston or uh, maybe burned a hole through a piston and started blowing all the oil out through the breather, so we're done for the day. Three cars out here in the garage. Harry Gant, one of the top contenders, out of it here early this afternoon. Also, the other car is Rusty Wallace. David Pearson's car is still on pit road. Now it begins to move. Let's go to Ned Jarrett, the but Pearson might, pit. He might just bring it around and park it. Hoss Ellington, who is the owner of it, uh, what is the problem? Well, Ned, you know, we put that mode in this morning, and I guess we got a Valco leak. Something's cracked on it. It's just leaking oil and got on the right front tiny. Thought it had a tie going down and liked to hit the wall, so he probably just the oil on it, so he's going to 
Just park it, I guess. Okay, he's just going to take it around the track and uh, pull her into the garage area, Mike. Pearson had hoped to have a really good run here, Ned. He came here this week with a brand-new car. They didn't get but about less than 10 laps of practice before he went out and qualified and had an outstanding run in the car, putting himself in eighth spot at over 202 miles an hour. We'll take a minute to say hello to Morris Langston, who, of course, is involved with Chattanooga Chew and the Helms Tobacco Company people. He's recuperating up in Presbyterian Hospital up in Charlotte, North Carolina. We hope to see him back around the racetrack very shortly. 30 laps are complete here at the Alabama International Motor Speedway with Dale Earnhardt riding in front, Elliott second, Kyle Petty rides third, Cale Yarborough is fourth, and Phil Parsons is in fifth position. He joined us late. Our apologies for electrical problems that affected half the county here and the safety equipment at the racetrack. That's why we're late getting started, and we hope that all of our MRN stations are back on the air with us on the Dow 900 service of the satellite feed. Among those 260 radio affiliates are stations carrying their first MRN race today. We want to welcome WBIS in Bristol, Connecticut, WBNF in Roswell, Georgia, WFKB in Florence, Kentucky, WCBQ in Oxford, North Carolina, Carolina, WYRV in Cedar Bluff, Virginia, and WYNI in Monroeville, Alabama, all carrying their first MRN broadcast today. As Dale Earnhardt leads Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty, and Cale Yarbrough down the back straightaway, and Richard Petty's moved up into fifth in front of Neil Bonnet, Jeff Bodine, and Joe Rutman from Alabama International Motor Speedway. This is MRN, the Motor Racing Network. In turn four, no one seems to want to drop off the pace yet. We've got one smoker down low that looks to be like the Phil Parsons car. Coasting in just ahead of your leaders is Bosco Lowe in the 17. Here comes Earnhardt onto pit road. Earnhardt is making his stop. Kyle Petty is just pulling back onto the speedway. Let's go to pit road and Ned Jarrett. Everybody is changing right side tires, Barney Hall, as they come down. Buddy Arrington going back out into the motor car. Sterling Marlin has been in for the longest. They had a little trouble on the right side. Now they're having to push him down pit road. As apparently the engine died, behind him is the McCord Ned. Gaskins car number 17. Check out Phil Parsons. He's coming down, and his left front is down. It looks like he's got a tire problem. He was in just a moment ago, and you are right. As he comes down pit road here, the left front tire is completely flat on that car. They changed the right side tires when he was in. Earnhardt goes back out. And... Parsons having to come in very, very slow. The inner liner had gone flat also on that car. Behind them, Ricky Rudd and Bill, Bobby Hillen will continue on. Your leader and your second place car now coming on to pit road for their first stop of the day. Two near misses on pit road. Don Hume almost pulls in and collects Jeff Bodine as Joe Bodine moves to the outside. Ron Bouchard had to go to the grass to miss them. Lake Speed was one of the drivers that made two pit stops, taking on tires on both sides of his Nationwide Auto Parts Pontiac before rejoining the competition. 37 laps are complete here at Talladega, and pit stops will shuffle the order as everyone... It takes about a lap to pit here to get in and out of the pits and back up to speed. You do lose a lap, but when the leaders drop off and make their pit stops, everyone should end up back where they were running once again. Well, Bill Elliott just got his service bike and is headed back out. He and Car Cale Yarber are both in at the same time. They drag race down pit road. Elliott's in front of Yarber gang room. Here's Neil Bonnet, an awfully good pit stop for Bonnet and the Budweiser team. He picked up several seconds on that, so he's not going to be far behind the leaders. Neil Bonnet gets back onto the racetrack. Darrell Waltrip had been going backwards just before they started this round of pit stops, and he is not running up to par here at all this afternoon at the Alabama International Motor Speedway. 37 laps are complete. 188 will make up the distance here this afternoon. Terry Levati is posted as the race leader. He's about to make his pit stop down by Ned Jarrett. Well, this would be his uh, scheduled pit stop, of course, and he, too, like all the others, will take on right-side tires. Mike Joy, Dale Inman, the rest of the Piedmont Airlines crew going to work. They clean the windshield, fill it up with gasoline, give him a cool drink. We don't see them making an adjustment on that car. They made a major chassis adjustment on Jeff Lodine's car. And Labonte gets off the jacks and heads down the pit road. The car number 17, the Bosco low driving, is back in the pits again. They had trouble getting it fired a moment ago. They pushed him all the way down pit road. He went out and came back in now getting a change of right side tires. Dale Earnhardt has assumed the lead after this round of pit stops. The latest word we get from NASCAR timing and score. <laughs> with Earnhardt, Richard Petty, and Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty. Gets all shuffled up on the 45th lap here as they come to the start-finish stripe. 
Yarborough, Earnhardt, Richard Petty, Bill Elliott, and Kyle Petty. Bobby Allison is trying to catch that lead draft out in one. Bobby Allison with a brand new paint job de debut at this race on his Miller American Buick. He right now hasn't got a drafting partner, but Bobby manages to close in within shouting distance of Kyle Petty, and he'll join up in sixth spot. Earnhardt now dropped to the inside as Cale Yarbrough hugs the concrete retaining while heading into turn three. Earnhardt tucks in behind him. Here's Richard Petty. He goes up to the eye outside to make it three wide. Petty tries way high in a turn. Can't do anything there. Here's Bill Elliott down low, closing in on the back bumper of Richard Petty. Earnhardt looks inside Cale Yarbrough, but there's no go as they come up on a slower car of Connie Saylor. That's the kind of racing the fans at Talladega come to expect, and they see it every time we come here. Here's Earnhardt coming around on the outside. will scoot by Richard Petty to take over the second spot. He's going to try and get Cale Yarbrough on the outside down in turn one. And again, we've seen passing on the outside today. Will it happen here? Well, Earnhardt draws alongside of Caleb, keeps that Monte Carlo wound up. There are a couple of slower cars ahead of them off turn two. Richard Petty tucks in behind Earnhardt, gives Dale the push, but now it's a three-wide battle for second. Down on the bottom of the racetrack, Here's the course board of Bill Elliott. He's side by side with Cale Yarborough now as Petty has moved by. It's Earnhardt, Petty, and the third place battle with Elliott and Yarborough. Elliott moving to the front. He'll get past Cale Yarborough and take over third. It's Earnhardt leading Richard Petty second. Then at Bill Elliott third and fourth to Yarborough, closing in Kyle Petty and Bobby Allison. Into the trioval. Petty has a look on the low side of Earnhardt, but lap traffic is there and a bit of smoke out of one car. It looks like Bill Elliott's car. Elliott has gone up in smoke. The car goes toward the bottom of the racetrack, still smoking heavily, but he is in the throttle in turn two. The whole, the whole world has just stood up back here off turn two, and they're just pointing collectively at the number nine car. Everybody goes by. Elliott's car still under power, but smoke showing from the rear. Earnhardt is leading Richard Petty, Cale Yarbrough, Kyle Petty, and Bobby Allison. Elliott's car is still up to power. It is smoking quite heavily, but he's dropping back not that much further from the rest of the pack, but he's heading for pit road. Elliott trails smoke. Meanwhile, Earnhardt leads Richard Petty a second. Back three car lengths to Cale Yarbrough. Four more to Kyle Petty, and then Bobby Allison goes fifth. And coming down on the pit road, Bill Elliott and every fan here is on their feet. Coming down the line, Earnhardt's going after Richard Petty for the lead, and he's going to do it on the outside again. They race door to door back into turn number one, and the crowd is watching that battle. Ned Jarrett's on pit road as Bill Elliott pulls the Thunderbird in there. Jerry Punch is in that area. Bill Elliott pulls the car in. They're working beneath the hood. We'll get a comment from Ernie and find out what the problem is. If it is indeed engine trouble, it would be the first time since 1982 that the Elliott team has lost an engine in a Grand National stock car race. to Jerry Punch for the story. They're still talking about it, Barney. Ernie Elliott, they were beneath the hood. They went to, to tie something down. Apparently, a power steering leak on the car. We're trying to confirm that with Ernie Elliott, who's still on the radio with Bill. The car, meanwhile, is back on the speedway. Elliott, uh -oh. not quite yet up to speed, but he's running pretty good as he passes Eli Gold. Closing in on Yarbrough, trying to go to the high side. Kale rides up the banking to near the wall and closes that doorway. And here comes Bill Elliott at the back of the pack, trying to race away from Kyle Petty. Petty, your leader, coming up to pit road. Barney, we're in uh, Kyle Petty's pits. Uh, smiles on the faces of the Wood Brothers here. Leonard, I'm sure it makes you feel good to see that Wood Brothers forward out front once again. Yeah, we think Kyle's doing a real good job. We're real proud of him. Yeah, we may have to make a weight change a little later on. I don't know yet. It's uh, getting just a little bit loose, but he looks pretty good out there right now. I'd say so. Kyle Petty putting on quite a display here this afternoon. He's been happy all week long with his good qualifying effort, being able to run right up front, and his whole attitude in racing has changed. 51 laps into the Winston 500. We've been caution-free, thank goodness, since they put them under green here this afternoon. The speeds, the race speed has been anywhere from 202 to about 205 miles an hour Marty all Hall, day long. Go ahead. We caught up with Ernie Elliott standing on the pit wall with us. Ernie, what was the problem with the car? It was nothing but the scavenge line on the oil pump. It's not that bad, you know, we just... Need to get a break, get caught up. 
Well, they said it vibrated loose and was blowing a little oil on the engine. That was a smoke we saw. They have tightened it down. He should be okay. Elliott has lost one lap, according to NASCAR scoring, but he is now pulling away from Kyle Petty at the rate of seven-tenths of a second per lap. So Kyle is the leader. Cale Yarborough runs right on his bumper. Dale Earnhardt is third. Richard Petty is fourth. In the fifth spot is Bobby Allison. Bill Howard stepped into our booth. He's the chief executive of Piedmont Airlines. And if the FAA had anything to do about it, you'd have to give all these guys pilot licenses because they're running out here a lot faster than those 737s of yours take off and land. Mike, that's so true. And Keisha, you look, you look at the 150,000 people or so standing here today, and they're standing. Literally, the entire group has been standing since the start of the race. I don't know why people buy seats at a stock car race, because they don't spend much time sitting down in them. But it's a good place to watch the race from, and what a race we're seeing. Are you surprised that Bill Elliott did not run away from the field, as many people had predicted? Well, uh, I think uh, Bill Elliott was, looked awfully strong to me. I think he was just uh, taking his time. He looked awfully, awfully strong. and. Uh, uh, you may see him uh, be a very distinct factor in this race yet, Nick. Your driver, Terry Labonte, had a strong qualified run, posted third in the field. He's been running around about the middle of the field, but it's real early yet. Oh, yeah, we feel good about him. He's doing a good job. The car seems to be handling well. They made no adjustments this last time in the pit, so we're in good shape. Four, 54 laps are complete here at the Alabama International Motor Speedway in the Winston 500. That five-car draft is now broken away from the rest of the field, and Bill Elliott continues to drive away from the now leader, Cale Yarbrough. A moment ago, the interval was about three seconds. He was in danger of going two laps down, but now he is going to make sure that they do not catch him and put him a couple of laps behind. Well, Bill Howard, since Piedmont got involved with auto racing and sponsoring a couple of race teams, I think now there's probably not a NASCAR racetrack that you don't fly to. Uh, Mike, I guess that's true. It's been a great thing for us from an advertising standpoint and from, from a people standpoint. Our people are so enthused about it. Bobby Allison had the lead for just a moment. Cale Yarborough took it away from him, and Yarborough goes back in front, dropping Allison back to second. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Benny Parsons has a problem on the Copenhagen Chevrolet, Barney. He came in. He was one of the last cars to come in for a scheduled pit stop. They changed all four, but when they let the jack down, apparently he had it revved up, and it broke the yoke on the drive shaft. So they're pushing that car behind the wall. We don't know if they're going to be able to try to repair it and get him back in or not. Well, that's a heartbreaker to have something like that happen because you lose a lap here at Talladega. It's possible to make it up. But if you have to make it up under green, it is awfully difficult at this racetrack. We mentioned that Benny Parsons had pulled the Copenhagen Chevrolet behind the wall. Benny, is it the drive shaft with the yoke on it, or what is it? I, I don't have, I, you know, something broke in the drivetrain. I have not been told. I'm assuming it's the drive shaft. Okay, Benny's still sitting in the car as they scramble around, bring tools over here and try to get some parts here to see if they can find out what it is and get it repaired. Good racing going on back in the pack, just as hot as it is up front. As Hale Yarbrough and Dale Earnhardt draft down the back straightaway. Outstanding run for Richard Petty here. It's been a long time since he's been able to get up front, although he has won at Talladega. He's never had that much success here. And Richard told us he felt like coming into here. He was not that worried about the two Ford Thunderbirds. He said he's been here enough to know that the fastest car does not always win at Talladega. Depth is, is so important here, uh, you know, uh, since, uh, you know, you're five or six mile hour close to a man, then you can run with him and, uh, you know, not that he uh, makes a bobble or anything. You just, when you're running that close, the draft just does so many crazy things that a lot of times you're able to slip by and, and win a race. So, uh, you know, I've, I've seen cars here that with probably 10th or 12 cars running in the race and it come down to two or three cars at the end of the race. Maybe the, the front two gets to race and this cat comes out of the woods and, and beats everybody. And uh, so, uh, you know, you don't even really consider them. Uh, you know, while you're racing, you're busy racing with what you think is the fastest car, and a slow car goes by both of you. So uh, the wind is uh, is so drastic, and it changes so much when cars get together that uh, the fast cars, like you say, are, uh, have the have, they do have the advantage, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't make it that much more of an advantage here than it does a lot of other trucks. A lot of good short track racing around the country next weekend. MRN and the Winston Cup Tour will take the weekend off. And two weeks from today, we'll be at Dover Downs, Delaware for the Delaware 500. NASCAR's Bush Lake Model Sportsman Series will be there as well. For a doubleheader weekend, they'll run the Bud 200 on Saturday. 
The Winston Cup Series wraps up the month of May at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Saturday, it's the Winn-Dixie 300 for sportsman cars and the Winston Stock Car Racing's all-star event. And on Sunday, the World 600, May the 26th. Motor Racing Network will not be at Charlotte, but will be back on the air one week later, June 2nd at Riverside Raceway in California for the Budweiser 400. June 9th, we'll give you the Vanskoy 500 from Pocono International Raceway in Pennsylvania. On June 16th, on your radio, the Miller 400 from Michigan International Speedway. And on June 22nd, it's the Sportsman Series, Indianapolis Raceway Park, and the Kroger 200. Second half of the season, of course, begins 4th of July at Daytona with the Firecracker 400. Richard Petty's back on pit road. Let's go to Jerry Punch. They pull the hood up on the STP Pontiac. They're looking at the left side of the car as Mike Beam and the STP crew. There's a little bit of smoke coming out from beneath the, around the valve cover on the left side of the engine. They are taking some cloths now, trying to wipe off Richard Petty sitting on pit road, losing some valuable time. Every lap around this speedway sets a new stock car racing record. The halfway average speed, an unbelievable 196.881 miles per hour despite two pit stops. Kale leads the field, Earnhardt is second, Allison third, Kyle Petty, and Darrell Waltrip, the front five at 97 laps at Alabama International Motor Speedway. They are pushing Richard Petty's car behind pit walls. Stock Car Racing's all-time winner will not finish the Winston 500. He'll become the 11th retiree from the field. Kale's the leader, Earnhardt is second, third is Allison, fourth is Kyle Petty, fifth is Waltrip, sixth is Bonnet, seventh Labonte, eighth is Rudd, ninth is Bodine, tenth is Baker, 11th is Lake Speed, Elliott has fought his way up to 12th, he's still one lap down. 13th is Dave Marcus, 14th is Bobby Hillen, two laps down, Tim Richmond is in 15th position, 16th belongs to Sterling Marlin, and three laps back, Jimmy Means is the 17th place car. Mike Joy, we caught up with Richard Petty, we're running along beside the car, Richard just sort of smiled at me real big and uh, pulled the window net down. Richard, what put you out of the, what put you out of it, Richard? What happened? Oh, I think it dropped the valve, I think is what happened. Richard's still sitting in the car. They're pushing the STP Pontiac back toward the garage. Richard smiled to us, gave us a big wave, and he's taking a ride back toward the garage. Jerry, he, he ran up in the front four there for a good bit of this race and had a chance to lead it. You might, if you're still with him, ask him if, if Bill Elliott, if Elliott or Cale Yarborough can break away easily or if they didn't have much trouble hanging with him. Well, they've already began to run and push him back toward the garage. They may make an effort to get him back out if they can get that valve fi problem fixed, but they think it may be terminal. That is a shame for Richard Petty because it was his best run this year in the STP car right up in the front of the pack all day and been no further back than about 7th or 8th. Once he made his way to the front, he was able to stay right up there in the lead draft. We've just passed the 100 lap mark, 101 go on the board as Cale Yarborough now pulls the field around the Alabama International Motor Speedway in the neighborhood of 198 to 199 miles an hour, but that's not going to be good enough if Bill Elliott keeps coming like he has. Ned Jarrett reported from Pit Road ever the watches are on Bill Elliott. He's turning laps in the 46-second bracket. We had him also here in the tower, consistently 46.8 and 46.9. That's about 204 miles an hour. That's incredible, Barney. They qualified at 209, and the race speed backed off about 4 to 5 miles an hour from that, given that you have to run 500 miles instead of just five here as you do in qualifying. 86 <laughs> laps left to run. They're going to string the field out all the way around the Alabama International Motor Speedway. They're still posting Cale Yarborough as the leader. Uh, just about everybody in the top ten has been on pit road. Kyle Petty was the first of the front runners to come in. Jeff Bodine right behind him, then Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. Then Cale Yarborough was in after that, went back out of the racetrack, so you really can't find any tight drafts anywhere at this particular juncture of the race. Here's Neil Bonnet in right in front of Jerry Punch. Well, they have the hood up on the Bonnet car, and Doug Riker, Tim Brewer, and the rest of the Budweiser crew are going to work. They have a hose there. They thought possibly an overheating problem. I just mentioned to Junior Johnson, who's sitting here against the wall, and I said, is it a drop valve, Junior? He said, we're not sure yet, so they're going to try to diagnose the problem. We'll get back to you momentarily. Bill Elliott at turn number three has just swept underneath Dale Earnhardt, and Elliott is in second place in that Coors Melling Ford Thunderbird. Earnhardt will hold on to third as Elliott sets sail in chase of Cale Yarborough. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, one of the Budweiser Chevrolets has been pulled behind the wall, and Neil Bonnet, its driver, has climbed out. Neil, what put you out of it? Well, the motor started running exceptionally hot, uh, just pegged the temperature gauge out. We lost the water out of the engine, and it got so hot that we couldn't get the water back in. The motor's got water coming out of the tailpipe, so it just ruined the engine. Neil, early on, a little bit of a surprise with, uh, with the problem with Bill Elliott. A lot of folks didn't kill Yarborough would be as strong as he is, but he seems to be able to pull away at will. I tell you, those fours are awful tough. I, you know, we, we've got our work ahead of us down the road trying to beat those guys. We've got a lot of work to do. 
Well, that's Neil Bonnet out of it here at Talladega. At the Alabama International Motor Speedway, and it'll be the talk of the racing world if almost going two laps down and then coming from behind to win this one here this afternoon. It's an extra $100,000 in his pocket, as Mike Joy pointed out just a moment ago. And Barney, that would be at this point without the help of any caution flags either. Tim Richmond's in the pits. He was a routine pit stop for a change of left side tires. They met the jack down, but now they've jacked it back up, and crew members are crawling under the old Milwaukee Pontiac, so he's got something else wrong with the car. And then there's activity in the Bill Elliott pits as Ernie Elliott is on pit road with the core side. Here is Bill Elliott's Ford Thunderbird down pit road. It comes with a stop. They will work on the right side of the car, changing right side tires. The big sweep room across the windshield with the Suds cleaning the windshield off. Elliott gets a cold rag and a cold drink inside the car. They have the right side tires on. Here comes the jack man back across toward the pit wall. Elliott down and away, 14 and 9, 10 seconds. Good pit work for the Elliott crew as the Thunderbird moves down pit road. He has had quite a day here. It's been a frustrating one in one way, but a lot of personal satisfaction to know that that car is as fast as it is. And as Ned Jarrett pointed out, he has made up all kinds of deficit without the aid of a caution flag, just simply by the way that car has run. 122 are on the board. 188 will complete the Winston 500. Cale Yarbrough still leading Dale Earnhardt, Kyle Petty, and Darrell Waltrip. Tim Richmond becomes the 13th retiree from the Winston 500. Drive shaft trouble on the old Milwaukee Pontiac will put Richmond behind the pit wall for the day. Cale Yarborough sails off turn number two and down the back straightaway in that Hardy's Thunderbird of Harry Rainier and J.T. Lundy, the car that showed a lot of promise at Daytona and at Atlanta, but at neither racetrack did that machine go the distance. Here he's got to run just another 65 laps to take the checkered flag, and I believe, Barney, it would be the first time they'd done so on a major super speedway this season where that car has gone the route. Thank you. It would be. Ricky Rudd is having a pretty good run here this afternoon. He's been caught in and out of the draft when he was able to get linked up with three or four cars. He's been able to run real well, but a couple of times on pit stops, he's been shuffled out there all by himself and has now lost some distance. Had a chance to talk with Ricky the other day about everybody talks about how easy Talladega is to drive, that your grandmother could get around this racetrack. Ricky, is that true? Well, it really is. You know, if you really can keep yourself calm, if you took a guy out the street and put him in the car and you told him what, what, uh, what stripes around the racetrack to stay in, and, and if they didn't pan it, they could probably go out there and steer the car around the racetrack. Uh, what happens here, though, a lot of people go out there and they get running at speed, and they start tensing up on the steering wheel, and they start chasing the car with the steering wheel, then they get the car upset. But if you can really relax and drive this racetrack, just about anybody can get around it. But when you get in traffic and uh, heavy drafting situations, it's a little bit different story. But by yourself on a racetrack, it's not too difficult. Cale Yarborough has just made a pit stop. Let's go to pit road. 14 and a half seconds, Barney, for the routine green flag stop for the Yarborough crew. Left side tires only. Meanwhile, the Piedmont Airlines Chevrolet had been backpedaling through the field. It sits in front of me on pit road. Dale Inman and the Piedmont crew say possibly they have dropped a valve as Terry Labonte's car now rather sickly begins to pull away from pit road. Terry Labonte had been going back through the field and had gone a lap down not too long ago. And indeed, that car has had some mechanical problems here. But Terry will try to go back out and finish and get as many laps as he can on Winston Cup points. With 133 on the board, he pulls back onto the speedway, heads back to turn one. A moment ago, trouble on Darrell Waltrip's car in front of Eli Gold. He was coming off turn number two, a couple of car lanes behind Cale Yarborough. All of a sudden, a big plume of smoke from behind Darrell's car. He shut it down, went to the apron of the racetrack, and he's heading around to the pitch. It was rather uneventful looking, but the smoke is never good. Cale continues to lead Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, and Bobby Allison. 50 laps to go at Alabama International Motor Speedway. This is MRN, the Motor Racing Network. Let's go to Jerry Punch in the garage area with Daryl Walter. Well, Daryl just getting a, getting a cold drink and a breath of fresh air. Daryl, tough afternoon. Look like the car was running awfully well for you. I can't hear what you're saying. Looked like the car was running awfully well for you, Daryl. Well, I tell you, you can't baby a Chevrolet home here, I can tell you that, because that's what I was trying to do. I had not punished the car hard all day. I just took it real, real easy. I got a chance to run with Kale there, and I thought it was a good opportunity to close ground on some of the other cars. And the engine blew. There's just nothing I could do. Well, that's Darrell Walter. He climbs out and lays down here in the garage and tries to cool off just a little bit. Darrell may be off to his worst start ever with a Junior Johnson operation as yet to win a race in 1985. The laps wind down here at the Alabama International Motor Speedway as pit stops continue. Here's Lake Speed in the Nationwide Auto Parts machine coming back onto the racetrack. Buddy Baker is in on pit road, and we will see one more round of pit stops for the majority of drivers, and we'll check that situation out. And Darrell Walker, who Ned said a moment ago, speculated might be able to go the distance. It means absolutely nothing anymore when you're parked in the garage. No, Barney, that was 
Uh, Bill Ellie that I said might go on one more pit stop. Walter had a pit stop coming up uh, pretty quick. So it'll be interesting to see if Elliott can make it on one more pit stop because Earnhardt and Cale Yarbrough and Kyle Petty are all going to have to stop one more time. Bill Elliott leads the Winston 500. He's going to have to make one more pit stop in order to go the distance here as he had that unscheduled pit stop early in the race. Let's go to Ned. Barney, I'm in uh, Bill Elliott's pit. I just checked with Ernie Elliott to see if they indeed could make it with just one more pit stop, and they can, and Cale's going to have to stop one more time. They just clocked Bill Elliott the last time around at about 46.40, which is about the speed that Cale Yarborough qualified at of over 205 miles an hour. That is hard to believe, Ned. As, as we said, this, the race speed here used to, the first four or five laps, they talked about the early laps would be 203, 204, but he put just, well, Elliott this afternoon by himself had been turning laps at 205, now linked up with Cale Yarbrough, but pulling away from Cale, still running at about 205 miles an hour. 150 are on the board, 38 laps to go as Bill Elliott comes by and is now pulled away from Cale Yarbrough by about two seconds, 1.5. Dale Earnhardt is on pit road with a hood up. Let's go to the pits. And there's a lot of oil uh, underneath the hood, Barney, and all down the left side of the automobile. Richard Childers and Kirk Shelmerdine and the rest of the crew trying to figure out where that oil is coming from. The engine is still running. Earnhardt's still uh, sitting in the car buckled up, waiting to go back out. They're just trying to figure out where all that oil is coming from. It looks an Trouble in turn four. We've got Jeff Benign up against the retaining wall. He's sliding around the turn now and rolling down onto pit road. He just went up and kissed the wall, rode along the turn, and now he's heading onto pit road and okay. And down in turn one, a lot of smoke from Dale Earnhardt's car as he crawls around the track apron. He won't be able to get up to speed to get up on the banking, but he's trying to make at least another couple of laps. Caution is coming out here at Talladega. We've not had one all day. 159 laps are on the board. Jeff Bodine comes limping off pit road. He'll go back into the action, but the contours at the right side of the Levi Garrett Chevrolet have been flattened just like a pancake, like somebody took an iron to it. Just about everybody is on pit road. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Well, Bill Elliott leads them down pit road. They're going to the right side on the course forward to Barney Hall. I suspect they'll come around and change left side tires too. Terry Labonte is in the Piedmont Airlines car, and Cale Yarber is in a little further down pit road. Well, the Hardy's Ford getting four tires and up toward the fourth turn portion of pit road. The, the right side tires are already on the left side. They're going on now. The air inches are down. The jack is down. 26 and one ten second four tire change under caution. Well, as he goes out now, Bill Elliott gets down off the jack after taking on four tires, and Yarborough is going to beat him out. So Cale Yarborough will win the drag race. It's Dodgem cars on pit road. Well, you told that right. Kyle Petty almost got it as as Lake Speed was going back out after getting service. Tim Richmond was pulling in, and a lot of traffic. Back at the Alabama International Motor Speedway, it's going to come down to a conclusion here very shortly, and it looks like it's going to be among the two Ford Thunderbirds, or the three Ford Thunderbirds, we'll put it that way. And so there's a front three with Cale Yarbrough leading Bill Elliott. They're getting ready to go back to green up in turn four in just a moment. Bill Elliott trying to close right up on Cale Yarbrough on his back bumper. Ernie Elliott says the cohesiveness in that team among the family members and the crew is what makes it work. You know, Bill's got a lot of confidence in the car. He's got, you know, uh, you know, he's got a lot of confidence in what we do to the car, and that makes a big difference. We'll see how much difference it makes right about now as they're about to go back to green. Well, Jerry Punch said Waddell Wilson, the crew chief on Cale's car, said they could beat him on pit road. They didn't know if they could beat him on the racetrack. We're under green as Cale Yarborough comes up through the gears in a hurry, shuffles off into turn number one, and Elliott goes looking for him down at the bottom of the corner in turn one. They'll have to work around Morgan Shepard's car. He was on the low side on the restart, but now Elliott is right there on the rear deck of Cale Yarborough's car. Kyle Petty, another Ford Thunderbird, is within two car lengths, and then four more car lengths back to Ricky Rudd, who's showing a lap down. Elliott chases Yarborough. They're tucked up against the concrete wall down the back straightaway. Here's Elliott looking to the inside now, decides to tuck in behind Yarborough as they hit turn three. Elliott right on Yarbrough's bumper as they take it low through three. Elliott staying down. Now he rides up behind Yarbrough as they come off turn number four. Elliott looks to the inside. This time he'll do nothing. Yarbrough will be your leader coming into the trioval. Single file past the head end of pit road and up into the 18 degree bank trioval. Then 1,600 feet to the start finish line. Elliott looks. No, he stays single file. And Kyle Petty is there. He's just three car lengths back of the lead duo as they go to turn one. That's where Kyle was last time by, so he has neither gained 
nor lost any ground. Everybody goes to the highest portion of the racetrack, about a groove down from the top. Then off the corner, Elliott sneaks a peek to the inside, elects not to make a move, they're single file. They're nose to tails, they thunder down the back straightaway. Here's Kyle Petty clawing and scratching, trying to hold on to the lead duo. He's two car lanes, back of John Moore on Elliott. Petty trying to grab onto the back of Elliott's car. He'll ride up the banking just a little bit. Elliott looks to the inside. Earlier, he was able to run way low in the fourth turn. This time, he stays right there with Yarbrough. Let's him do the work off the turn. There is no question that these final laps will be the fastest of the day here at the Alabama International Motor Speedway as the three Ford Thunderbirds have it all hooked up. Cale brings them down to the line. Elliott, a half a car length back. Then it's Kyle Petty. They're back in turn one. And for those of you who like the nostalgia, so to speak, how nice it is to see the Wood Brothers car right back up there in the hunts to those Thunderbirds have now effectively pulled away from Ricky Rudd but again he was not among the leaders off turn two it's still Yarborough Elliott Kyle Petty single file as they initially came onto this long 3,000 foot back shoot Elliott did again look to the inside but again tucks in behind the hardy four they climb the banking at turn three as they go up the banking Petty goes up the furthest but right now it's Elliott glued to the rear bumper of Cale Yarborough looks to the inside but does nothing holds on the line as they come off the turn. Now he looks inside again. Here comes the Thunder. Three fast Fords into the tri-oval. Back to the start-finish line. 166 laps. 22 to go. Kyle has a look on the low side. Drops him back about a car length from Yarborough and Elliott. Last lap by under 47 seconds. That's the way they've been running as they go to turn one. And again, midway between one and two, Kyle Petty will once again from third spot close in on Bill Elliott. Elliott this time doesn't even sneak a peek to the inside. He'll just stay right behind Yarborough on the backstretch. Now peeks his car to the inside. He may be going for his top, the top spot. Petty decides again to tuck in behind Yarborough. Testing one more time is Elliott. He still has 22 laps remaining before this one's over with. Petty sitting right back there trying to hold on tight. He's about two car lengths behind Elliott. Elliott is glued to the back bumper of Cale Yarborough. Front three locked together. This crowd on their feet. Everybody is not about to take their eye off this racetrack as the laps wind down. Cale brings them down again. Elliott just sits there playing a waiting game. Bill Elliott's going for the lead in turn three. Bill Elliott has taken over the lead going into turn three. It's Elliott on top. Yarborough second. Kyle Petty third now as they sweep off the backing. And this time again, Elliott brings it right down low to the apron and tries to pull away as he cuts to the inside. Cale Yarborough can do nothing but watch Bill Elliott drive away as they come into the dogleg part of the Alabama International Motor Speedway. Cale linked up in that draft with Kyle Petty, and they still cannot catch Bill Elliott as he pulls away by about 10 car lengths. They're back in one. And again, Bill Elliott running by is lonesome now and trailblazing is a good bit lower on the racetrack than when he was running in the draft chasing down Cale. Bill working awfully well off the turn, and then Yarborough down by 10 car lengths. You had to know Elliott wasn't going to wait to the end of the race. He tested, he tested, then he finally whipped by Yarborough. He snakes his way down the back straightaway, trying to break the draft and leads by four car lengths. Elliott splits the middle of the turn right down the middle, as you were, and then he comes down to the inside of turn four. He'll drop it down almost to the first groove, come out to the wall, and then head into the trioval again as he pulls away from the wall and goes low into the turn. The question has been on anybody's mind all week. Will Bill Elliott run away from the field? At the start of the race, no. But right now, Elliott flashes across the stripe. He's got six tenths of a second on Kale already. Meanwhile, Bobby Allison has gone past Ricky Rudd. Good call. Trouble, Trouble turn. in turn four. We've got Bershwale getting loose and spinning into the wall, banking in turn four, sliding down across the track and onto the apron now. Eddie Bershwale. That'll bring out the second caution flag of the day as Bershwale has hit the wall up in turn number four to bring out the caution, and this will be a break for Cale Yarborough and Kyle Petty as there's still plenty of time to get back on pit road, make any adjustments they need, but the only adjustment they can make would be to put a J47 jet engine in that thing. Looks like to catch Bill Elliott with 172 laps on the board here at Talladega. Eddie Bershwell's car sits down to the track apron uh, coming out of turn number four. We'll get an update from Dave Sullivan, uh, Dave Sullivan rather, in a moment. Don't forget the NASCAR Live comes your way every Tuesday night on most of these MRN stations. You can call in toll free and ask your questions of the folks that make auto racing history every week on the speedways of the Winston Cup circuit. Let's go to Pit Road. Bill Elliott leads them down Pit Road. They put right side tires on the Curtis Ford. Kyle Petty also in the 711 Ford getting right side tires on his car. They come around. They're going to put left side on Elliott's too. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. Right side tires already on the Hardy's Ford for Cale Yarbrough. They're putting the left side tires on. We have the watches on 22, 23, 24 seconds as they are getting Yarbrough's car serviced. From Alabama International Motor Speedway, this is MRN, the Motor Racing Network.
174 laps are complete here at Talladega. Let's go back up to turn four for a quick update from Dave Sutherland. Well, the good news is Eddie Birchwell is out of his car. He just was helped out by the safety crews, walks over to the apron of the track now and takes a look at the car after having taken a quick dip toward the wall coming into turn four. The car got sideways and swooped down to the apron, back up against the wall, and then slid down onto the grass. Birchwell is out of the car, talking with the safety crews and walking over to the ambulance for a checkup. As the Pontiac Trans Am safety car leads them up in turn three, we'll tell you that two weeks from today we'll be at Dover Downs, Delaware for the Budweiser 500 here on Motor Racing Network. And the Winston Cup cars will close out the month of June at Charlotte in the World 600 and the Winston. Uh, close out the month of May with the Winston, Stock Car Racing's all-star race before we head off to Riverside, Pocono, and Michigan in the month of June. 176 laps are on the board. There are 12 laps to go here this afternoon in the Winston 500. Who's it going to be, Bill Elliott? Kyle Petty looking for his first win ever in the Winston Cup competition. Cale Yarborough, who's one of the toughest in the business, has a lot to prove here today as the green flag flies right in the middle of the dogleg. They come up to song real quick. So those engines now will be turning better than 8,000 before they hit turn number one. Bobby Allison is directly ahead of Bill Elliott, and Elliott's boxed in, has no place to go as they hit the number one corner. The reason he's boxed in is because Buddy Baker to the inside of Bobby Allison occupy the front row, and then it's Dave Marcus just to the inside of Bill Elliott, so it's still two by two. They come off turn number two. Allison, then Bill Elliott. Kyle Petty, and Kale is going to go way to the inside. Here's Carol Yarbrough way down to the bottom. He's up beside Marcus. Now four wide. Elliott wedges his way to the inside of Bobby Allison as they hit the banking in three. Elliott down low. He'll go underneath Allison to stay in front. Then it's Kyle Petty working his way up to Allison to go into second. Yarbrough still caught back in traffic about five cars behind the leader. Here's your leader. It's Elliott off turn four. Bill Elliott comes off turn number four as they battle side by side. Back for the second spot behind the point. Elliott opens up an eight car length lead. Kyle Petty second and Baker almost lost it coming out of the trioval right at the start finish line. The car jerked left, swung right and he held on. Bobby Allison is now behind Buddy Baker. That is until Cale Yarborough splits those two. So it's Bill Elliott passing us off turn two. He's got seven car lengths on Kyle Petty. Then Baker, Allison, and then Yarborough. Elliott again weaving back and forth inside to outside, trying to break the draft of Kyle Petty. Here's Yarborough now, swings to the outside of Buddy Baker. Nothing in front of him now but the two leaders. Yarborough goes into third, way up by the wall, almost took it, came back down. Your second place car is Petty. Your leader is Bill Elliott. Probably wouldn't have made it any difference, but Cale Yarborough tried to make the move two laps ago in the middle of the backstretch while Elliott was caught right up in the middle of that pack of traffic, but Elliott saw him coming and just broke out of there like a pig trying to get to the trough. Bill Elliott has not cracked the throttle, still comes zipping down and continues to pull away, and the fans are cheering him, but then they glance back to Keel Yarborough and Kyle Petty. That's going to be a whale of a finish. Going to be equally as good for that fourth spot between Bobby Allison and Ricky Rudd as they began to dice around for that spot. It's on the last lap. The white flag is out. Bill Elliott is pulling off. Cale Yarborough trying to break the draft on Kyle Petty using the low side of the racetrack. Elliott passes us. Now Cale and Kyle coming back off the corner. Kale now tucks in behind a slower car, uses him as a pick as Kyle went to the inside, but that path was blocked off. He now goes to the high side of Yarborough, going to turn three. Here's Kale Petty, Kyle Petty up on the outside of Kyle Yarborough. It's Petty and Yarborough going for second. Here they come off the turn. They're door handle to door handle as your leader sweeps into the trioval. It's Petty on the outside. Bill Elliott comes down and will win the Winston 500, but they are still door-to-door -door for second spot. Cale Yarborough and Kyle Petty, the two Ford Thunderbirds, ride door-to-door -door as they come to the line. Who is it going to be? It will be Kyle Petty by what? Six inches, no more than that, finishing second as they sweep back into turn one as Bill Elliott wins here at Talladega. And we'll be going to Victory Lane to chat with him, and what a payday he will have picking up the race here this afternoon, coming overcoming almost two laps down early this afternoon and coming back to win. To Victory Lane after this from Alabama International Motor Speedway, this is MRN, the Motor Racing Network. NASCAR Today continues on the Motor Racing Network. Bill Elliott has just collected his eighth career win this afternoon. It will be his biggest payday ever, an extra $100,000 from the R.J. Reynolds folks, and he should be in victory lane with Ned Jarrett. Well, he is in victory lane, a very big smile on his face, Barney, as he gets the safety paraphernalia unhooked. Now, let's clarify that situation as far as the $100,000. He is guaranteed to get that. He is the only man now that can win uh, the million dollars because the others are all shot out by Bill Elliott because he's won two of the first four of those races. And while we wait for Bill to get out of his car, let's go quickly to Jerry Punch. 
Well, Dan Kale Yarbrough, who gave Elliott a valid run today, and came home third. Kale, it was a heck of an afternoon. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, you know, you just got to hand it to Bill. They got their stuff together. They got the car running good. And as long as they stay together, it's going to be hard to beat. That last lap was a while when you and Kyle were coming through four. It looked like uh, it was sort of uh, give, and, give and take there the last uh, few hundred yards. Well, uh, yeah, I knew that Kyle was behind me, and I knew he had a good shot at me because he was in the right position, but, you know, wasn't anything I could do. I couldn't back up and let him go, so I just had to stay there and see what happened. Well, that's Kale Yarbrough. Let's go back to Victory Lane and Ned Jarrett. Well, Bill Elliott's crawled out of the course forward. A happy man, Bill. Quite a run here today. Missing there, but I felt like I got the best set of good year tires there at the end. I'd like to thank all the other people that helped, Champion, and all the others. Boy, car worked. Bill, it had to be a, a very disappointing feeling when you did have to make that pit stop Got almost two laps down as fast as they were running, and then no cautions come out for a long, long time. Tell you what, I worked my tail off to try to keep up, and I just kept on digging the old car held together. You run it just about as hard as you go all day, I reckon. I had to. Well, congratulations. You got that 100000 guaranteed now by Winston. Of course, they aren't going to give you a check today, but you, you're guaranteed that, but you're closer to that million. Well, I will keep working hard on it, Ned. Okay, he'll be at Charlotte in a few weeks on the third leg of that. Bill Elliott, who currently is fourth in the Winston Cup point standings. That'll move him up a bit winning here today. As we said, it is his eighth career win. We'll talk to a couple of other drivers involved in this exciting finish at Talladega when we return. This is MRN, the Motor Racing Network. Jerry Punch is standing by in the garage with the second place finisher, Kyle Petty. Well, equaling his best finish ever, Barney, Kyle Petty. He's got a big smile on his face here in the 7-Eleven colors. He climbs out of this Ford Thunderbird, and Kyle, that last lap was a wild scramble. He got close. Uh, I knew, you know, with about 10 laps to go, Bill just pulled off and left everybody, and, uh, you know, I knew it was going to come down to KO, and I was fortunate enough for him to pass me. He came up on me, and I was afraid he was going to sit there and ride in third, and, uh, you know, my car ran super good up off two all day long. It was super strong, and KO went to the inside of the racetrack, and I stayed on the outside and got on the outside of him, and then took a few lessons from Daddy when Daddy beat him down at Daytona last July, I guess, and kind of tried to keep him pinched down through the trial over here, so uh, it was trying to cut the wind a little bit and was fortunate enough to beat him by a couple feet. Kyle, latter part of the broadcast, a lot of nostalgia buffs were talking about it. it's good to see the Wood Brothers car up front, and it's good to see a Petty up front again, but it's both in the same car, so it, makes, it has to make you feel real good. Oh, yeah, it makes me feel great, you know. Uh, it's good to see the Wood Brothers car back running competitive. You know, Buddy run competitive in it, and Neil did, but, you know, we've run real consistent this year. We've been real fortunate, and, uh, you know, I, it's good to see a Petty up front, but as far as I'm concerned, it's good to see this Petty up front. Well, that's Kyle Petty finishing second at Talladega. Boy, he certainly turned his career around. There is no question about that. Oh, no doubt, Barney. He, he and they are just tickled, and this was a tremendous run for them today. We'll be going back to Ned Jarrett in victory lane, and he might get a comment from someone on the record average speed for today's race. It's unbelievable, Ned. 186.288 miles per hour, the average speed for 500 miles. Well, Mike, we're standing by with Ernie Elliott, who engineered this course forward in here. Ernie, they just gave me the word, a new world record for a 500-mile race at over 186 miles an hour. Of course, you qualified at over 209, which is also a world close course record for a stock car. How fast are you going to make this thing go? Uh, I don't know. We're going to try to go faster for good Lord's willing, Ned. I, you know, first of all, i got to thank the good Lord. And second of all, I'd just like to say that I'm proud to be an American, and I'm proud to be, live, be able to live in a country like this that the American dream can still come true. That, you know, if you're willing to work, you can do whatever it takes to get to the top. Well, you folks have certainly done a super job with that. Now, dude, how fast do you think that you can make this thing go? When you come back here in July, are you shooting at 210, 212, or what? Well, I think when you look at things, Ned, you know, you know, what, you know what's a limit? I mean, you know, the limit is what you limit yourself to. And if, you know, if you feel like you can run 212, then 212 is possible. So, you know, <laughs> uh, I think a good goal when we come back would be 212, and I don't think it's unsafe. I think we once saw one of the safest Talladega races here we've ever seen. Well, we certainly did, and congratulations on Super Run. It's a particularly happy day down here. It always is in Victory Lane, but there's something a little special down here today. Bill and Ernie and Dan's uh, parents are celebrating their 42nd wedding anniversary today. So what a wedding anniversary present that the young sons have given. Mildred, I know that you're proud of these boys. Very, so proud. Are you a big race fan? 
Not really. <laughs> Not until Bill started racing. Do you watch him run out there at these speeds? Yes, but I walk a lot, Ned. You do. Well, congratulations on this 42 years. Thanks. Thanks so much. You have a super family here. It's quite an anniversary party with 122,000 guests. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back. Time to swing around the speedway and check with our turn announcers and everyone else on the crew for the Timex Timeliest Move of the Race Award, which is worth $500. First for a nomination, let's go to Eli Gold in turn two. Well, let me give an honorable mention, Barney, to Bobby Hillen. The youngster started seventh, qualified so very well, and kept his nose clean all day and ran a good race, but I'll give him an honorable mention. I've got to go with Kyle Petty, uh, with, again, all due respect to Bill Elliott, for that matter. But Kyle came around, and he battled one of the toughest in the business, one of those money drivers we were talking about earlier, to pick up second spot. Great run for Kyle today. I'll cast a nomination in his direction. Let's go up to Mark Garrow at turn three. I'll have to echo Eli's vote for Kyle Petty. It was... He showed great patience in staying behind Kyle. He could have got excited, pulled by uh, Kale with two or three laps to go and not had a chance if he had led himself to believe that he actually had a chance of running after Bill Elliott, but he made the right mature move saying, I can't catch Bill, but I sure in heck can get second place if I play the waiting game. He did that. My vote goes to him. Dave Sutherland? Well, we have to give honorable mention to Jeff Bodine for keeping his car straight once he caught the wall here in turn four, but Kyle Petty uh, may have equaled his best output so far in terms of finishes, but it had to be his biggest finish of his career, and he certainly uh, outdrove a real fine driver in Cale Yarber to win to get that second spot. Let's go to Garage and Jerry Punch. I'd have to echo a vote for Kyle Petty after being up here in turn four and watching him come through the trial. Well, Kyle did not give an inch. As he said, he learned from his daddy watching him back when he got his 200th in Daytona last July. you got to hang in there and give them, give them what they'll take and what they'll give and to try to get a good finish. And he did it today. He came home second. Ned? Well, I think Buddy Baker certainly deserves an honorable mention here, uh, Barney. As you pointed out, right near the end of the race, he had uh, several uh, pretty timely moves uh, during the race, keeping that thing harnessed between the walls. But uh, he almost got her out of shape down at the start-finish line, pulled her back in. Of course, only his driving ability helped him to do that. But still, you got to go with that Kyle Petty situation. Okay, we have four votes for Kyle Petty, so... Looks like he's going to end up because we can't outvote him, but I'm going to have to go with Bobby Hillen, Jr. He did make a lot of timely moves here today. It was good to see this young driver who is determined to make it in Winston Cup racing run up in the front pack all afternoon. He was up there almost from the start of the green flag, fell back a little bit. Several times we watched him through the dog leg, and this is a critical point at Alabama International Motor Speedway. You can get in trouble so easy here. He had the car that would run up there, but he didn't overdrive it at all. He used real good judgment. He made a lot of good moves. I, I'll have to cast a vote his way. I'd vote for the entire field, Barney, for <laughs> helping us run a race that had only two caution flags in it and contributed to that tremendous average speed. Okay, I'm out of the light. Okay. Bill, there is no other word to describe today's performance, but wow. Unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what, that Coors Mountain Oil Pump Thunderbird just kept right on digging. You know, we got some time down there, and I felt like, if, well, I'm going to win this race. I'm going to do what i got to do, and I felt like, well, I'll just let it all hang out. And it held together, and it handled good, and, uh, it, you know, what else can you say? Okay, describe your feelings when the hood was up in that car and you were going down almost two laps. Well, I really, you know, it felt like I was down ten laps as long as it was in the pits, but, you know, the crew worked hard. They, they saw what the problem was. They got it fixed. They got me back on the racetrack, and I felt like it was up to me to do what I could, and then the car held together, so they did a good job on it, too. Okay, now what was your strategy at that point once you did get back in the truck? Well, there wasn't one. Go as hard as you could go and hope it stayed together. Were you worried about it holding together at that point? Because you absolutely could not back off at all. It, that's what really worried me. You know, I know Ernie and, and James Lyle does have a good job on the engine and all the people back at the shop. And, you know, I, that was one, really one thing that really worried me. What about that $100,000? Well, I'll tell you what. I still can't believe that, that we've got that much, and I'm looking forward to the other 900000 I hope we can get it. We're going to work hard for it. What about the pressure of this week coming into this race? Prohibitive favor. Talk about that a little bit. It was a lot, you know, and I know that one thing, I know Thursday I had a lot on me, and it, it's getting a little bit hard for me to handle, but I feel like that I'm getting a little better at it, and I feel like that I'll try to relax. We'll continue to work hard. You know, we was tired. We worked hard a lot, or long hours back at the shop coming here, and I felt like that showed on me Thursday. Too, I went home. We are back at the motel last night. I got a good night's rest, and we came back, and we worked hard, and we won the race. Okay, now what do you do going to Charlotte, which is, the of course, the track for the million? Well, that's hard to say. I'm sure we'll give it our best shot and, and hope we can get that Winston million. Great, Tom. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. We've got to shoot another ad.